What a beautiful morning to get going. How do you feel? I feel really bloody good. What a sick day. Yeah, feels yeah. good, doesn't it? Feels really good. Feels good to start on a, on a good night. Yeah, straight away. Sun shining, so many clouds, glassy waters, those, that wobbly sea from the westerlies has gone. Suddenly we'll be blowing out there. We're on. We are on. We are so on. Even if we're not, we're fucking on. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's off, we're on. Even if it's off, we're on. I'm Benita, that's Yosh, and this is the newest member to our family, our daughter Tallulah. Our sailboat Nanji has been our floating home for five years and after spending a long time stuck, we are back on the move again. We've just completed our first overnight sail with our daughter and are about to begin our biggest passage as a family as we head towards Australia. This first leg is a 700 nautical mile sail across to Indonesia. We are off to find some waves to surf, clear water to dive and the general seclusion amongst the tropical paradise that is the Mentawi Islands. First though, we have to cross the busy shipping channel in the Malacca Strait and then it's onwards to Sumatra. Getting a bit emotional. Like, you know, it's good, so good to be leaving, but it just hit me like this is where I was pregnant, you know? Like, this is some monumental things happened here, you know? Some pretty significant life events. So, yeah, thank you, Link Howie, for looking after us and for Malaysia. Especially James at uh, in Paco Marina, like he has just helped us out so much. When I was pregnant, we used to come out to these islands here and have a little float around, like oh. It is sad to be leaving, but it is very happy to be leaving as well. It's kind of like the end of a chapter here, leaving Malaysia. We've spent a long time here, a lot longer than we had ever planned to. Around these islands, we know I'm like back of my hand, you know, we've we spent the lockdown around here and anchoring and staying secluded. So like, we know this area really well and as we need to say, you know, we got pregnant here, did a bit of banging around these islands. <laughs> but yeah, it is it is sad and uh, I don't think we'll ever return to Malaysia, but just the way COVID is, I think heading back to Australia, South Australia coast to get ready to head to Africa when we can just when COVID sort of calms down with us. COVID is really bad in Malaysia and through this area is the worst it's ever been. We just can't deal with more lockdowns. If we don't leave now, I don't know when we would leave. We, we just can't handle being stuck for another six months. Like it's just taking its toll. So whatever happens, whatever happens ahead of us now happens, but we need to get out of Malaysia and we need to close this chapter and move on. It's, yeah, it's, we're at the end of my tether right now. turn into one of those uh, horizons where you can't tell the difference between the sky and the sea. It's not quite there but it's uh, it's on its way. So pretty 
amazing to be out here and looking at this glassy water. Very pretty, but not the best for sailing, that's for sure. So Marley's going to be flying out soon. Yeah, so Marley flies out on four days' time. Yeah. Three days' time. And so he has to go to the van for his final checkups and everything's all organised with everyone. But just while we have our last bit of reception, I just want to touch base there and let, let everyone know that we're out of here. So it's all up to them now, but I don't know, I'm, I'm very happy. Everything's, yeah. All these ducks are in a row. Yeah. Exciting. We're all starting our journeys. Yeah. Got a bit of Vegemite, that home calling. <laughs> a little bit of Vegemite. So speaking to Dave from Beach House, he's been looking after in the last few days. And I was just wondering, making sure Marley's all okay. And he sent me this photo. Aww. <laughs> he looks pretty happy. If that ain't a boost, it looks damn happy with himself. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna come with us though, buddy. You're coming home, mate. Hey. You're not moving into bed jams. <laughs> <laughs> coming directly from the south as it was um, forecasted so so far in the last few days the forecast has been perfect so um, I, I'm pretty sure that we're going to get what we expect from this passage which is pretty cool. the end of the chapter so we're starting a new chapter so I thought I might as well turn into a rock star and let's go party because we were off the Indo and you know a haircut is kind of a sign of a significant change in life when people do something drastic to their hair and, you know it's a pretty significant time in our lives closing a chapter here in Malaysia trying to sail back to Australia heading to Indo COVID crazy times but you can still have fun Breaking bad. I'm breaking bad, man. <laughs> Look at my whole okay. Oh, business up front, party in the back. <laughs> so they're just looking at me like, you look like an idiot, Dad. <laughs> Dad look like an idiot. Yeah. something out of these videos consider becoming a patron there'll be a link in the description below cheers guys
typical bloody fishing boat. He's been kicking around there, doing his circles, picking up his net or whatever. Sees Nancy rolling and decides he needs to steam it as fast as he can directly across our bow, but like more like so the timing is going to be we're going to collide, you know, so making us needing to change course. We're trying to steal our luck. Get out of here. We stopped like literally in our park, like we're having to change course now to go around it. Oh, it's all fun and games out here in the high seas, isn't it? Just stop there waiting for us to pass. So who are you pulling it out for us? Uh, the net was just pulled out. They were just frothing out. Oh, okay, cool. I was like, I don't know what, hey, like what that means. <laughs> that means hello. Okay. They're just frothing out. They're just pulling out their net and everything. And since Nanji was close, they thought we might as well say good day. Have a good old sticky beak. Should be right, mate. Uh, a bit of excitement. Back to it. Well, it's been a long time coming. We pretty much mowed it all day. It was predicted to be like a pretty good southerly 10 15 knots all day and it's really only just starting to show its signs now and it's a good three o'clock in the afternoon so hey we've scooting along we've knocked out a good 60 odd miles already so that's majority of the uh, malacca strait we're out in the middle of it now um, a bit different crossing it from where we are because we kind of reach across to indonesia and there's 100 miles of indonesian coast of the northeast uh, northeast coast of Sumatra that we travel down. So the actual passage across from land to land is a lot shorter. Yeah, we're only just starting to get this suddenly now. So hopefully it builds up and we get pull out a heady and we'll just get this beam reach going on, which is what I was hoping to be doing all day. But hey, I'm not complaining. Dead calm seas, bloody motoring along at six and a half knots is a pretty good feeling. We've got that slight little current with us, so I'm not complaining. It's pretty bloody cruisy out here. I know when we get down the other side of Sumatra we're going to be faced with a bit of on the nose 20 knots upwind sort of stuff and then we're going to be in the open Indian Ocean as well so we'll have a have a bit of a challenge on the other side heading down those fir first 50 miles of Sumatra so uh, yeah it's I'm definitely not complaining about having some calm weather for this first day or two. It's so good to be back. <laughs> What's your dinner, love? Tonight we have uh, leftovers from last night, that meal that I cooked, and yeah, it's always best to just try to keep the dishes slow, so Tupperware. in the Tupperware container. So cooking was done by me tonight. <laughs> Because all I had to do was heat stuff up. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. What's for dinner, girl? You on the milky tops? Yeah, you on the milky tops. I got on your shirt. <laughs> the gentle southerly breeze has finally arrived. <laughs> just as the sun's going down. But we still chucked a, a reef in the main. We've been motoring the full main all day, but as the sun goes down, we still do get some pretty big squalls potentially through the night. So uh, generally whenever we're sailing uh, and we're on passage, when it comes night time, we reef down with whatever sail we have. So if we have a full main, we'll reef down to the first reef. If we have the first reef, we'll go down to the second reef. Generally, depending on our latitudes, but that's generally how we operate. Um, but yeah, we finally got a little bit of breeze now. 
Not enough to turn the motor off, but maybe enough to get a head sail out soon. Might be able to fill it. Today was meant to be the strongest day of the wind. So it was forecast to be like 10, 15 southerly. But uh, yeah, we pretty much had zero to zero of nothing, just full glassy. But there's a little bit of a ripple on the water now, so there must be a bit of southerly down south there, down the, down the strait. But yeah, we'll be uh, in the lee of Sumatra for that come tonight, I reckon. Because we've been doing six to seven knots, we're doing bang it. So very cruisy passage. Loving it. Party lights. Bit too close for my liking. It's the first night at sea and uh, we are 360 degrees surrounded by fishing boats. There's just lights everywhere you look around us. Um, we ha are just approaching a shipping lane as well. So there's um, some ships out on the horizon. Nothing yet within five nautical miles that I can see. My problem is that um, we have our AIS on and we can see other ships with their AIS on, but there's some that um, have been like dropping off and on on the charts. And so um, it makes it a little bit harder to kind of time um, passing them. This one's just jumped on the screen now. So we're currently crossing the Malacca Strait, which is one of the busiest shipping channels in the world. And now there's no ships. Oh, there's so much activity out here. They just come out of nowhere, eh? Yeah, like, Fast. yeah, it's like I'm just sitting here staring out there, like, and then it's like, whoa! We got another boat coming up ahead. I can see their port and starboard light, so they're coming right at us. Um, we're under sail at the moment, but we'll just change course for a little bit. That's where they go past. Like passing ships in the night. These three are all coming towards us. Oh my god. Oh, these fishing boats, we've just made it past the big fleet. There's, you know, on the horizon, the, the sky's lit up with fishing boats and we just went through a massive patch of them and I don't know what they're doing, but it's pretty hard to navigate. We had one even at the end there that circled us it's very confusing, they're not on AIS, so you're just looking at their lights and they have party lights on them. As they do have their nav lights, as their green and reds, but they also have party lights on there as well. So you're just trying to work out what the hell they're doing and it's generally only up until you get pretty close to them that you can kind of, well, just then, yeah, we didn't know what they were doing until it was like, well, it's right there, you know. We had two lots of um, four, four fishing boats that just all were coming directly at us. So we must be some kind of spectacle on the ocean at the moment, I think. Maybe our lights are lighting up our sails and they're 
coming over to see what's going on but I, they just motor around and kick around in this area so rather than trying to avoid you know the vessel coming through they've all started steaming at us so at least with the cargo ships you got them on AIS you can see how fast they're going you can see their direction and you can really you know plan towards getting around them but these fishing boats they're just kicking around motoring around and you don't know what they're doing or what their intention is so yeah I'm just glad that we've made it through that minefield of, um, sh uh, of fishing vessels and now we can just kind of relax a little bit and focus on the big ships. <laughs> nautical miles away but we were traveling along this way and it was coming this way and so we've changed our course so this ship is traveling 298.8 degrees and so we've changed our course here to 278 so trying to match him so you can go past if we stay on this course we should pass each other with the one nautical mile between us That'd be nice. It's about 7.30. We're just waiting for the sun to come up. Yeah, so it got a bit uh, rowdy last night. We had uh, a little bit of wind. It started to pick up there at one point. So we um, reefed the main and the head sail down. And we were doing it at about seven and a half knots. So, um, and we had uh, the swell we had the swell on the beam, so it was quite rolly. I think all the cushions downstairs have gone everywhere and I could hear the toilet seat jumping up and down, which is pretty amazing because it's made of heavy ceramic. So yeah, bit of, bit rolly, <laughs> bit of a roll, but yeah, I think it's good to be back out here again. It's really lovely watching the waves this morning the light just flickering off of them yeah all's good we're still doing uh six knots so <sighs> easy 